All right, have you ever traveled somewhere where there's a beach and been there and thought to yourself, man, I wish I could fish here? You can, and I'm gonna tell you how today. What's up, gang? Welcome back to Return of the Wild. My name is Sean Ritter. On a previous episode, I was talking about traveling and fishing in other countries, be it Canada, where I was fishing recently, and I was kind of walking through the process thinking, you know, while you're fishing there. Well, I've also just returned from a trip to Cabo San Lucas, where I went fishing on the beach by myself. I've done it in Costa Rica, I've done other places in Mexico, and it's something I feel like a lot of people don't know that you can do. You can actually travel, be it business or personal, and go fish without hiring a guide and kind of some ways that you can DIY it. Of course, I'll start first off, the main caveat is obviously make sure you know the licensing restrictions of things. I can say they know for sure places like Mexico specifically, if you're on a boat fishing, like if you're chartering a boat, then you have to have a license fishing from a boat. Just to fish from shore, you don't have to have one. So whether it's Jamaica, uh, Mexico, uh, Costa Rica I've been, Dominican Republic, all same thing, you actually don't have to have a fishing license to do it. Of course, you do have to bring your own fishing gear along with you unless you can somehow find a way to buy fishing gear while you're in the country you are. But most often when you're traveling places, that's not really the first list or, you know, say it's a vacation to like an all-inclusive resort, usually to find something like that is going to be hard to do. So I'm going to walk you through some of the stuff that you can bring with you to fish in any country you go to basically for free. I mean, if it'll allow that. Obviously, three things you need to be fishing. You need a rod and reel, and then you need tackle. So first off, the best one that I've found, Akuma uh, Citrix. It's a travel rod, comes in this really awesome hard case, fits perfectly into your luggage at a diagonal, or if you got a bigger suitcase, it could stand up in there as well. So you can transport it to and from safely. Pulls out in this cool little sleeve, you unroll it, and it comes in four pieces. This is a seven and a half foot rod. I mean, you're going to pull the pieces out. I remember when I first ordered it, I was like, man, this seems like there's no way it's going to be seven and a half feet. You put it together, it's seven and a half feet, and it's not like flimsy or moving around the way that they built this. It actually holds together really, really well. So I've got a link posted in the description if you want to pick up this rod for your next trip. Like I said, seven and a half foot. Now, that's a little short on the surf fishing end. A lot of times, a lot of guys are fishing, you know, on the surf. They're talking rods that are up to 10 feet. But like I said, I fished with this. You can throw some baits pretty far with just this simple rod. Got it. It is. I can barely reach back a little seven and a half feet long Puma Cerex rod. So then you've got the rod. I'm going to take this down just so I don't like beat into things in my chop here. So got your rod. Yeah, we just need a reel. Um, it's going to be salt water. Obviously recommend a salt water reel. They are different. I even still, after I'm out fishing, I do take my reels and I rinse them off to get any kind of salt off of them, sand, thing like that as well to keep them clean. This is the uh, Pen Fierce 2. There's the Fierce 3 that are out there on the market. You can get these pretty affordable, uh, 80 bucks or so for a good salt water reel. The thing is, it's not just salt water. You can use this on fresh water as well. So for some of the fish's lakes around, you know, the continental US or Canada, wherever you are, it's a great reel to have. In fact, actually this exact rod setup, I use fishing on my kayak. So it's kind of like my hair jig slash shaky head rod. We've got a rod, we've got a reel. Tackle. I bring this one tackle tray. This needs to go in your checked luggage. You can't fly with this in your carry-on. Same really goes for the reel. Um, the reel itself, you can take in your carry-on. You just can't have line. So you'd have to take the spool off, put the spool in your check bag, you know, with the laws and everything when it comes to flying. I just actually take my reel, I case it in like a big sock and pack it into my check luggage along with my rod and obviously my tackle tray with some basic tackle. Now what I've built here for a tackle box, this to me gives me the opportunity to not only cast lures from shore for a chance to catch fish, but also I can do some bottom surf fishing. I'll walk you down through some of the stuff that I have in here. That's great for you. Um, obviously as far as baits go, if you can get a hold of shrimp or there's even a lot of artificial baits out there. Uh, Fish Bites is a really popular one. Uh, they've got like shrimp and sand flea flavor. Those are probably some of the most popular. Or if you want to catch bait, really simple way, sabiki rig. Pick these up. Basically, if you're from the States and you fish crappie, you've heard of a, a, a crappie rig or something where you've got multiple baits on one line. This is basically six little like fly or flea or whatever type imitations that run vertical on line. Drop it down. You can catch multiple fish at one time. Been fishing in Florida and caught a bunch of pinfish with this. Pinfish then turn around to be bait on your bottom rigs. Um, circle hooks are like almost a must. Different sizes for setting up your high low rigs, um, which then you need a weight in the bottom. Um, you've got these pyramid sinkers. There's also the Sputnik sinkers, which are really the better ones. Um, I've used the pyramids. I have a bunch of two ounce 
and one ounce I can put multiple on if I want. They do stick up in the sand a little bit more if you're doing some of the surf bottom fishing. Um, there's other accounts and other people you could follow for some much better information, more specific to surf fishing. Uh, ben Beach Bum and the Sinker guy, I've got them posted below. You want to check them out. As far as casting lures, I would just bring some like heavy jigs, um, big crankbaits. This is the one. Um, it's actually got some teeth marks on it from fish hitting it. And I lost a nice fish while fishing in uh, Cabo just recently with this one, the uh, Rasta Popper. Really love that white redhead. You know, you've got your walking dog, a couple of hair jigs, just your standard like weighted spoon. Something like this is great. Just take your one rod out, drop straight down, rip it up as fast as you can off the bottom. And like I said, I've been to Jamaica, Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, Mexico, and traveled with all of this and fished. In fact, actually while I was in Costa Rica, I did hire um, a guide who went out kayak fishing while I was there as well. Really amazing, amazing experiences. To me, just something really cool about fishing in other places and getting to learn just generally how it's done. It, it's a different experience if you're someone that, you know, is in the north, in the states, or the south in the states and fish a certain way, you know, and a lot of these rules go as far as flying with fishing gear. You go on a family vacation to Florida or somewhere else in the east coast, you can bring stuff with you, take a couple hours, and go fishing. So always the three things to remember is real, you can't have line in your carry-on luggage, you can't have close sharp objects in your carry-on luggage as well, those gotta go in check bags. So if you plan on flying with gear, plan that you are checking stuff along the way. A couple things also to think about to have along, like a good pair of pliers. And then, you know, obviously as far as line goes, just some basic braided line, whatever brand or whatever you want. This, I just happened to pick up the trap, this PC Vent Onyx, some braided line. And then a leader material. This I use a 40 pound straight 100% fluorocarbon. You know, just get a little spool of it to make some reels. I do this for making my high-low rigs or just setting regular leaders off of my braid when out casting. So some line, some pliers, because these are different fish with teeth and things they may not be used to. Always good to not have to grab them, potentially hurt yourself like I did with my chef's knife last night. But anyway, hope this video helped you out. If you plan on traveling anywhere, um, give it a like because that lets me know that you found the information valuable and it's something you're interested in. So I can make more content around traveling and fishing and things like that, as opposed to normally see me doing a lot of kayak fishing and giving you tips and tricks and little tidbits that way. If you did find value in it, again, like I said, give it a like or subscribe to the channel. It all lets me know that you enjoy this content. And I just mentioned I was in Costa Rica kayak fishing. You've got to see how cool that experience was right here.